Hey Hoties, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mass Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. We're going back to the testing drawer a bit today. I have some updates about some things that I tried in the last video and some other things. That I have a new thing that we're going to talk about. We're going to do a first impressions of a new foundation to me and I hope to have the review for it out sometime next week. First update is that I think I'm gonna pass on this cloud set. I'm not really wowed by it, but I also have this Charlotte Tilbury one, which I'm almost done with. And then I have the Givenchy powder that I bought like last year. And then I wanna finish that. And then Khaki gave me another Charlotte Tilbury powder. And I know I don't really care for this as much as I care for this, so I can find this a new home. I think that's the only thing from the last video that I'm like ready to part ways with. I oh, know I could probably part ways with this too. So I also part ways with the Monica Blunder Liquid Flush in the shade Munchen. Like I said, and I showed you in the last video, this is like a really good dupe for the shades from Khaki's Finding Ferdinand collection. So if you missed out on that and you wanted something similar, I would recommend this. At least if you are like fairer. It's not like really like macchiato at all, which I don't have in my collection anymore, but it was the one, the deepest one in the, the beiges. But if you wear like Latte or Olay, if that was what you were after, I think this would be a really good alternative. It's not as dewy, but it's really, really beautiful. I, I really, really like it. If I didn't have Olay and Latte from Khaki's Finding Ferdinand collection, I probably would have kept this because I really, really like the color of it. Really beautiful and it wore really beautiful throughout the day. It didn't really disappear whenever I was doing wearing it after that video, so I, I think it's a really good product. I don't need them. I'm going to pass on those. Let's start with this lip injector. That's not a lip injector. What's it? The Dr. Nose Gross Lip Plumper? Uh, I still don't think it does anything. I still don't know if I'm going to keep this Olivia Palermo primer. My face was a little bit itchy after my video last week and I don't know if it was the primer or if it was the Guerlain. It could be either thing. One, we don't really know how old this was and when Khaki gave it to me she was like, I don't really remember when I bought that, which is fine. I willingly took it and it didn't leave like a rash or anything. It just like my skin was itchy. And then also in the Terracotta Latente from Guerlain, this is really fragranced. I don't know if that was bothering me, and it also had a different amount of coverage than I'm used to, so I, I'm not really sure what it is, so I'm gonna continue playing. But today I'm gonna use a tried and true primer for foundation. We're gonna start with the base. I'm gonna be using the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base because I'm trying a new foundation. Anytime I try a new foundation, I like to start with this as my primer. Now you could say, why are you wearing a primer at all? I always wear primer when I wear a foundation, so I think it's important. The reason I like to choose the Bobbi Brown is I don't think the Bobbi Brown does anything excessive. It's not super gripping. It's not blurring. It's not mattifying. It just creates a really nice canvas for the foundation to go on. And like, I just like that it doesn't really like do anything to the foundation on top of it as far as how it will look. So that's what I'm going to use to prime my face. I'm going to zoom through the next bit, but I'm going to leave it in, but it's going to move really fast. I'm going to record footage for the final review of the next product, and I will be back to speak, but we'll play some music for you before we start getting into it. I'm going to be using the About Face the Performer Foundation. I bought the shade L1. I, uh, to be quite honest with you, I don't know how I managed to get this as fast as I did. So, about face sent out an email order early and I just bought it because this is by far of anything that's ever been released. This was the thing that I have been tagged in the most times like of a new release ever, which is interesting because About Face, I've been like hit or miss on most of the things that I've tried. And like, it's not really in like the typical range of products that I, like I love foundation. So like, I'm thinking that's why people wanted to hear what I thought about it. But also like, you know, it's just interesting because it's not like a luxury thing. It's 20, it was $22 and I really don't even know how it's going to go. But I am going to put it on and I will be back, but I'll show you what happens uh, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't really look too much into this before I bought it other than I know it's from About Face and I know people were excited about it. I do want to say this is a really good match for me, L1, so if you are a skin twin of mine and you're not waiting for my review and you're going to buy this, L1 is pretty good. But if you are interested in this and you haven't checked out the range, look at it because they have, I think, an olive undertone in each level of depth. Looks like they're trying to fill some gaps that other brands don't typically cater to. I know a lot of times people with olive skin tones just like kind of deal. So if you have like an olive undertone but we like match for the most part, see if the olive undertone might be a better fit for you. There's fair olive and I think there is also a light olive. But if you're a neutral or like neutral slightly leaning pink, L1 should be a good match for you. If you're fair. I mean like a light. I'm normally like the light shade. Typically fair can kind of look a little bit sickly on me. A couple of things. So the applicator is actually pretty nice. Sometimes whenever you have like a doe foot, it feels like it can get pretty gloopy, but I felt like this was really strongly holding on to the product and it wasn't going to go anywhere. It does have a little bit of a smell to it. The smell reminds me of like a volume way turned down version of that wet and wild paddle foundation that everyone said smelled like paint. But if I had to guess, it's like either fragranced to cover up like the natural f scent of this product or it doesn't have any additional fragrance in it and that's just what it smells like. It's not unappealing. It's not bad. I think the thing that I'm most surprised by is that it's pretty dewy. It's like very dewy and I wasn't really expecting that. Like I think my face looks wet which is definitely a look for some people but I don't know it's a look for everyone. I should have mentioned this before we put on the foundation. If anything acts weird around my eyebrows, we're going to give it a pass. I waxed my eyebrows yesterday and um, I ripped off skin. So the skin around, like the eyebrow area, the skin around it is just not looking her best, to be quite honest with you. I like the coverage. I would say it's medium. Uh, it did a really good job covering the redness here, but like over here, it's not looking super red. So I think it has some pretty good coverage. I wouldn't say it's full coverage. Uh, the formula feels really light. It doesn't feel like it's like heavy on my skin. I'm curious about how it's going to take to powder. It's just a lot, it's a lot dewier than I was expecting. I am going to contour with Intuition today. What did I contour with? Oh, I used the Danessa Myricks palette. I'm going to use Intuition. This is my favorite contour that I have right now. And I'm just going to use that same brush that I talked about in the last video, the BK112 to contour. I am having a really strange week. I'm filming this on a Wednesday and so there's still some week to, is it Wednesday? There's still some week to go. I'm just kind of ready to go to sleep. I even took a half day yesterday because I've just been so out of it. I used this app, this not sponsored by the way, I got an ad on TikTok for this thing called Swipe Wipe. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people who pays for iCloud storage because I'm the worst because I just don't delete photos ever. And what Swipe Wipe does is it takes all your photos. And I think it only is available for iOS and like the iCloud on an Apple iPhone. It is limiting in that way. I, I did read that they were like attempting to make a Google version. Anyway, all that to be said, what it does is it kind of turns your photos into Tinder and you swipe left if you don't want to keep them, you swipe right to keep them. So I was really taken back and <laughs> to a place, <laughs> places that I wasn't expecting to, to go yesterday. Was that yesterday? Goodness gracious, I have no idea. It was it was a emotionally trying. <laughs> it was an emotionally trying day and I was already not feeling it and then I was just really not feeling it. it it's anyway. So for highlight today, I'm going to use a cream highlight before I powder because then we're going to use powder, highlight, and bronzer. I'm going to use this. This is the West Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlight, and I got the shade Peau de Rosé. Now, they make a liquid version of this, and uh, I don't know if the stick version comes in the same shades as... I'm going to say this again in case you're new here and you haven't heard my thoughts on this packaging. Very heavy, very lovely, beautiful to look at. And one of the most impractical things to open, it's really hard to open. Now, I have to wedge my nail underneath here. And the first time I tried a Weston Atelier product that came in a compact was her powder. And the powder has the same packaging. It's just, I think, a matte white or it's a shiny white. It's been a long time. It's like, it's, it's the same compact, just a different color. I was painting my nails at that time and I couldn't I couldn't get it open without, but I didn't want to stick my, my, my painted nails underneath there because I wanted to chip them. Um, so if you have like mobility issues or you are someone who likes to wear acrylics or anything like that, because I can't really open this whenever I have press-ons on, this might just be a pass out of that. Like it's just hard to open. If I don't put anything under here, like I cannot 
really get it open unless I'm using the bottom of my nail. I bought this when I was in Las Vegas. I'll just use my fingers to apply it. So what I've been doing with this, and I watched Michelle Wong do this, it's kind of like a prep step for the whole cheek to make it glowy. The thing is, it has a little bit of a pink sheen to it. It also has some sparkle in it. And it it's weird because it's not usually the kind of sparkle I like, meaning it's kind of inconsistent. I don't really know how to describe it to you. And I really don't know why I, I have been enjoying this. But like I swatched in a store and I have swatched in store a couple of times and it's something that I always like think about. But there's not really a tint to this one, at least not on my fair skin. There are some like bronzier ones that were like too dark for me. I wouldn't know what to do with them as far as like highlighting. I know that Michelle has mentioned that with the darker ones, she like uses them to like pre-bronze. I'm not really into that, but I will highlight. It's not looking much glowier than the foundation. Like the foundation is really glowy. So you can see a little bit of that pink tint. I just think it's really stunning. It is what like a balmy highlight and I don't really feel like it sets, but I just like the way it looks on my skin. I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with like the color of it. Do I love it more than the Surat Torch Lumiere? No. I don't have Rose Diamante, but I think Rose Diamante would be closer in the Surat line to this. I don't think that you need to spend $75 on it, but it's, you know, a nice little, it's a nice little trinket. Because I just got rid of the only other new powder I have, I'm gonna work on my Project Pan, <laughs> my Project Pan powder, which is this Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not gonna do all of my usual powders because I just wanna see what this foundation will look like after powdering, but like not with all of like the blurring powders that I typically use. I'm guessing because this foundation is so luminous though, I would bet money, I don't know for sure, it's gonna break through the powder pretty quickly. In my testing of the foundation, I will try building it up to see if it can be used as like a concealer, but based on like the finish of it, I'm not sure that it's gonna be like a, a great concealer unless you like a, like a wet looking under eye if that makes sense. Like, that's the vibe. But it's taking to the powder well, kind of bringing it down to a finish that I feel more comfortable with. But I still even feel, after powdering, and this isn't the most matte powder I've ever used either, but I still feel like after powdering, we still have a lot of luminosity coming through. But what's nice is that it's not, like, sparkle. Because, like, something like this could give me flashbacks to the makeup by Mario, which was, like, wet looking and sparkly. Next, I'm gonna bronze with the Gucci bronzer because I don't have another new bronzer to talk about. I still love this. Next up is something I'm fairly certain I'm going to declutter. It was something that I took from Khaki and it was in my testing drawer. It is from Tom Ford and it is the Shade and Illuminate Blush in Brazen Rose. This side caught my attention at first. This shade is like not really my whole gig. If you're familiar with me, it kind of reminds me of, what is that Gucci blush? That one Gucci blush that I was like, it wasn't anything at all like I thought it was gonna be. If you look inside this side, you can see there's like red dots in it. And Khaki, when she decluttered it, she was like, it ha that happens on her cheek. Now I've used this a couple of times. It's never done that on my cheek. What I will tell you is, I don't think it's anything particularly interesting. I'm sure that this is very expensive. I'll start with the deeper of the two shades and keep it more concentrated at the back of my cheek. And I do think that like that blush on its own is kind of pretty. This smells like Tom Ford product. And then I'm gonna take the lighter of the two shades and then put it closer to the apple of my cheek and blend it up. So that's what it looks like. It's pretty, but I'm not gonna keep it and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> and I also don't recommend it as a, something that I would buy. It's fine. What a luxury blush, in my opinion, should offer is a, something more nuanced that I couldn't find in like a drugstore range. So just kind of by comparison, About Face, their blush line is like very bright, cool, bold colors. Like they, they look cool, but they like there's not a lot like to them. But like when you look at this Gucci bronzer, like it's really hard for me as someone with a fair skin tone to find something like this available to me. And a lot of times, you know, luxury brands can offer that. Not so much in bronzer. It's bronzer is a harder one, but I do feel as though this Tom Ford blush, 
is a blush color you could find in like almost any range. The drugstore or midpoint or in other luxury houses. And in my opinion, the formula isn't noteworthy enough to like keep. When I think of my Mimi or from Wes Metelier, or if I think of Kira Weiss's Inner Glow, those are blushes that bring something to the table in my opinion, and I don't think this does. Not only that, Tom Ford's packaging isn't my favorite packaging. It is, I think, more designed for like a luxury person on the go. It's tip it's fairly light and easy to fit in places, which is great for some people, but it's not really what I'm looking for whenever I'm thinking of luxury. And there's no wrong way to think of luxury, I don't think. Like if you if this is what your desired luxury is, cool. Uh for me it's something more like weighted like the Westman Atelier. I don't feel any kind of way about this. And Kristen will probably love that. Uh, but I think the complexion's coming together pretty good. I haven't used this on camera yet, but I have worn it on camera. This is the Olivia Palermo eyeshadow palette in Soiree. She has, I think, three colorways. So this is what Soiree looks like. And this is what I wore in my Best of Beauty 2023 video. So my friend Ananda sent this to me. Her name is medium underscore olive on Instagram. So if you are looking for someone who is going to know a lot of good colors for people who have olive skin tones, she does beautiful flat lays and like all of the colors. Oh man. It's really good. Just like, you should follow Ananda. She sent me two of these Olivia Palermo palettes. Let me tell you something. There is not an eyeshadow, small eyeshadow palette that I've had from a luxury brand that has come close to like the weight of this. Where Tom Ford fails, Olivia Palermo makes up for in packaging. Not only that, unlike the Westman Atelier, I find this relatively easy to open. There's more that I can grip on, but the magnet is pretty strong. So I don't know if you have dexterity issues, if you will be able to open this super easy, but definitely easier than the Westman Atelier, which is like impossible to open. One thing I will note is that, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get to do it on purpose, but the first time I opened this, the mirror is also magnetically in placed into the compact. So the first time I opened it, and I think this was because it was really cold when the day it delivered, the mirror stayed, you know, attached to the eyeshadows. It wasn't a big deal. And what I've learned is that if I get more of a grip underneath this ledge here, that it doesn't do that. I have had it happen to me since the first time I did it. So just something to note, I will say I do like that it's magnetically placed in there because in theory you could pop out this mirror, maybe on purpose. I actually don't know. Like it has happened a couple times. It happened with both of the palettes that Ananda sent me. Why I like that it's magnetic is I had one of the Victoria Beckham eyeshadow, smoky eyeshadow bricks, and the mirror just fell out of that. When this got magnetically attached to the bottom, I was able to just pop it back up. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to demo this. I'm going to try to recreate the eye look because a lot of people were asking me about the eye look that I was wearing in that video. So we're going to try to recreate it. I'm going to do my usual eyeshadow prep and we will get started. If you're not familiar with me, my usual eyeshadow prep is using the Narge the Narge? The NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base with a cream shadow. I don't really have a preference. I've, I've been using this Natasha Denona shade. It's like my personal goal to hit pan and hot before the end of the year. In this Olivia Palermo palette, also you can recreate this look very easily with eyeshadows you already have. Well, I think there were some people who have this eyeshadow palette and were curious on how I did the look. A lot of you should be able to find this because this is just like kind of like a camel -y beige a uh, light lavender, a uh, mid-tone purple, and then a very deep purple. And then also this sparkly blue, which I would say is of the eyeshadows that we're looking at is definitely the most special of the, the shades in here. It is like a navy eyeshadow, but the sparkles in it are iridescent and like maybe a little bit multi-chrome. The eyeshadow itself isn't multi-chrome, the sparkles in it are. If you have something like that, but also you can do whatever you want. If you're just doing your makeup and uh, getting ready for work or whatever. I'm just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. But if you feel so inspired to do the look that I did in that video, that's what we're doing here. I'm going to start with that beigey shade and kind of use it as my transition. Brushes don't really matter. I'm taking a big blending brush and just kind of not really going all over the lid. Also, again, we're running into some problem skin on my eyelids because I ripped it off. So uh, if the eyeshadow is not laying correctly, that's not really the eyeshadow's fault. What I've 
been finding so far with the Olivia Palermo palettes is that I don't know that I love this matte formula and I don't hate it but I also don't love it. I'm finding so far that the biggest draw of these is the aesthetic packaging of this and I do think that the three color stories or I don't know the color stories I've seen the two that I have they're well curated and I do think Whenever you're, you know, only choosing six shades, I do feel you can get a handful of looks out of these. Sometimes in a quad, you're just getting that one look from that quad. But like, I could clearly take this a more bronzy route. There are sparkles that are already on my lid. I don't know where they came from. I don't think that they're coming from this palette. I like her shimmers, especially like these really special, like that is really, really pretty. It gives me the energy of like, baby spice at, at the on the live in istanbul spice girls live d concert dvd if anyone else owns that i own i own that and then i'm gonna take the lavender pink like in the center the li lighter pink and taking a smaller brush and doing a more concentrated kind of like over top of the brown shade so we're kind of just adding a little bit of pink to that brown but this pink is like not really gonna like show up show up it's more of like adding some umph to that brown as opposed to like it being the star of its own thing i'm gonna take an even smaller brush in my crease i guess you know what i'm i might use the same brush or a similar size brush in the crease as a set of like above where I'm drawing my crease I'm gonna take this mid-tone purple and just throw it in the crease taking it a little bit down the side not really putting it on the outer corner really too much because we're gonna put the darkest purple there this is the best time I've had using the Olivia Palermo mattes not that they've been difficult it's just like they just haven't been performing as like well as the other eyeshadows I use. So Vizier Art makes some of my favorite mattes. I really like Hindash's mattes. So I would say like they're not as good as that, but like they are actually like really, they're kind of turning out. I'm wondering if it's kind of breaking through that first layer of something. Not that there's like an overspray, but you know how sometimes like you start getting into a product a little bit, especially like powder products, and they just start working different and they start working, well, either better or worse. It's like either for better or worse, you start getting into it a little bit more and it's like, oh, is that how you're going to work? I'm going to flick out the end. I didn't really do that in my other video, but I'm kind of doing like a very like lazy cat eye shape. And then I'm going to take a smaller brush and go into the deepest purple. And I'm going to focus that on the outer portion of my eyelid. So smoking out here. And then I'm also going to take it up into the crease too. I want my crease really dark because the navy sparkly navy is pretty dark and I found that like this wasn't deep enough the purple that we laid in the transition at first it wasn't it's not deep enough to like make it look super seamless and then I'm gonna go back into some of the other purples and just go over top so that they don't get super lost on that depth I would absolutely use a glitter adhesive for <laughs> the sparkly shade. One, it's going to allow the sparkles to be a little more sparkly. Sometimes the glitter primer will make something feel less sparkly. I do feel it in this particular formula, it makes them feel a little bit more sparkly. It's not like it's, it has the most fallout I've ever used. But I would say if you're trying to avoid fallout, I would say that just go with the glitter primer. I'm going to use the NYX one. So nothing, nothing super fancy. NYX glitter primer works just fine for me. And uh, I'm going to apply that with the brush that I last applied glitter primer with. And it is hard and crunchy. And I'm going to go into that blue shade with just some like a packing brush. I was looking for, I have one from Surat that I've been really liking applying shimmers with. I think because it's so soft, it doesn't really like agitate the sparkle and cause fallout. But as you can see here, this blue shade is just doing kind of most of the heavy lifting with this eye look. 
Well, like, yeah, we done a lot of, like, building out the crease and such. Like, that's, that's the look. Like, like, that's what we've been waiting for. Look how much it closes off my eye. Like, look at how heavy it looks on my eye. I love it. I have smaller eyes, smaller eyelids. I have less, less retail space. And when you have less retail space, it's, like, not advisable to go so heavy on the eye. Because it just makes your eyes look smaller. But I like the way that looks. I think it looks cool. the eye look. I'll zoom you in. I'm gonna put eyeliner on too, but that's what it looks like. Just what those eyeshadows look like up close and personal. And then for eyeliner, I'm gonna use Ash from Victoria Beckham. I think that's well. No, actually, I think I'm gonna use Coco for a little bit of cognitive dissonance on the lid. Honestly, I didn't have any fallout. And I'm gonna put my Surat Releve mascara on. I just wiped off the lip product. I'm going to line my lips with Endless Cacao from Makeup Forever. And then I'm going to use this lipstick from Ravi Beauty. It's the shade Dahlia. And it is, of the three shades I got, is my favorite. It's more of like almost like um a lip balm. I don't know if they're supposed to be lipsticks or lip balms. I feel like I missed the launch of these, so I have like no idea like what they're supposed to feel like, but they're really super comfortable and they look really nice on the lips. And there's not like a lot of tint to them, but there's enough tint. It's like they're really, really pretty. And this has been the shade that I've like kind of worn nonstop since I got it. That's kind of pretty good. I mean, it's not the most lipstick usage, but like I use these, I use this one a lot. I'm not going to spray my face because that, about face foundation is pretty luminous, um, surprisingly so. To be determined on this, I I don't I don't know where we're gonna land. It kind of reminds me. I guess this is where we're kind of reflecting on this. It kind of reminds me more of the Glossier foundation, kind of in finish. I feel like it has more coverage than the Glossier, but also might have more tenacity to it, but I had to be determined. I I definitely felt like I needed to powder it. The Westman Atelier Loaded Highlight, Super Loaded Highlight in Peau de Rose. Super pretty. It's really pretty. Gucci bronzer is always a winner. Charlotte Tilbury powder, that's not new. The Tom Ford blush, as I said earlier, I'm just gonna declutter this. Uh, I'm sure I could find it a home of someone who will really, really appreciate that kind of thing. I just, uh, I don't feel that super overwhelmed like, by it. I think it's fine. And then the Olivia Palermo eyeshadows. I think where I'm landing with these, but I did like it the most I've ever liked it using it today. So I've used it a couple of times. But today's application of it was different, and I just kind of used a mishmash of brush brands, because sometimes that will come into play if I'm trying to use only brushes from one brand to do an eyeshadow look, but I kind of jumped around, and I think it worked better than it's ever worked. My working thoughts on these are like, if you're looking for a luxurious treat of experience, I think that this is worth it. If you're looking for the highest of performing products for your dollar, I don't know that these are it, but I super like it. <laughs> I super like it. It's not my favorite eyeshadow formula by any means, but it is absolutely my favorite packaging, specifically in a small small eyeshadow palette from a luxury brand. Still in the testing phase, I still want to keep playing with it. I think Olivia Palermo has like chosen to close the brand. You can find some of the stuff on pretty heavy discount right now. So because it doesn't look like the brand is in existence or at least is phasing out whatever it's currently doing, I'm actually going to declutter and like throw away this Olivia Palermo primer only because Khaki said she thought it was old and if the brand is going away, I wouldn't recommend buying a primer from a brand that's closing unless you already like the primer. So I don't think any of you should go out and buy this really heavily on sale if you can find it because it's just, I don't know. But I also think that this was what caused my skin to feel itchy that one day. So I'm going to throw away this too. 
but that's just because the brand is closed the eyeshadows though eyeshadows those still work so i'm not i'm not decluttering those and i also like the lipsticks so i'm gonna keep playing with those it's just a matter of you won't be able to buy those things but i don't think that's important you know as far as me as a makeup channel if i find things that i love and i have access to them i'm gonna keep loving them um but i don't think that this is worth my time at this juncture anymore but something I do feel comfortable and I will also move the other one. I am going to move the two Ravi lipsticks into my permanent collection. So I have the shades Dahlia and Lily and I'm just going to put them away. <laughs> like I just I just know that I really like these and I will definitely turn to these. I did declutter the the pink shade from it. I think it was called Lil. Um, no, what was it called? I don't remember, but I already passed that on unused. So it was nice to be able to do that. Happy to move these into my official drawers. But I think that's the only thing that's shifting is that. So uh, that's that. If you happen to be new to my channel, welcome. Right now I'm trying to get through my testing drawer. I was gifted a lot of friend mail. I got some makeup decluttered to me over the past oh, like the holiday season. And I'm just trying to work my way through it and get my thoughts around it. So I'll be doing like a series of this type of video. Uh, but also you saw me pull out some of my favorite things. I'm also trying to like pan some products over the course of this year. Anyway, ultimately, whenever I do purchase something, I try to make sure that it makes sense for me to buy it. And I try to build that habit for myself and I try to help you build that habit. So if that's the kind of content that resonates with you, makeup wise, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. I'm on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. It's patreon.com slash hope mess tom. Over there I do one additional video every month just by myself. And then the podcast I do with Khaki called Dumb Bitch Hour lives there. And we do release that weekly. We were pretty bad about it over the past month because of the holidays and both of us traveling to and fro. Uh, but we're back on our normal schedule. So we are, <laughs> we're back, we're back. There's no pressure to join my Patreon. Liking, commenting, sharing, those are all really, really wonderful ways to support me. Uh, and yeah, this, you don't have to join my Patreon. That's great. They might already be launched, but if I have launched channel memberships and you kind of missed it, channel membership will get you the access to the same thing that Patreon gets you. And by Patreon, works in the way where whatever you give it's like it's give what you can if you'd like to give so everyone gets the same benefits of it it's just like it's just it's literally a way to support me it's not like tiered there's it's, it's just whatever you can give if you want to give everyone gets the same thing so I know that some people don't like patreon and don't want to put their money on patreon so I figured that channel memberships might be a better or easier way for some people to have access to that kind of thing only if you want again optional do join and you want to watch the the podcast, all of the older episodes are going to be found on the community tab and you're going to have to scroll to the bottom because that was the best way I could figure out how to get all of those videos <laughs> in the channel membership. Anyway, remember to follow your hoe and you'll find me and go forth. Tits out. I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye.